right, good morning and welcome once again to your favorite show on TV. This is Cool TV, Channel 1, I6 on Star Times. My name is Dapo Bando. This is Crossfire. All right, I have with me in the studio Ishama Againe, and we will be driving the show together. Ishama, what's up? Good morning. It's a rainy, <laughs> rainy Thursday. Rainy Thursday. Good morning, Nigerians, and welcome to Crossfire. And all of that. All right, this morning we have a very wonderful package that we brought you away. And listen to me, you don't want to go nowhere. You want to really find out why we're bringing this up on Crossfire. And that is because we will be concentrating very actively on the political side of what our discussion is going to be based on. Uh, this morning. Um, we have a gentleman, but um, I will introduce him to you um, after I must have introduced what we will be discussing this morning. A genetically modified organism, GMO, also known as a transgenic organism, is any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. GMOs are the source of genetically modified foods and are also widely used in scientific research and to produce goods other than food. So we'll be talking about genetically modified you know, organisms this morning. And listen to me, what we are, we'll be talking about and concentrating on will be the tomatoes that you've been eating, the mangoes that you've been consuming, and virtually all the fruits you know, that you take on a daily basis. And that extends even to the chicken and the, and the turkeys and virtually everything that um, we consume as food in Nigeria. We have a gentleman, I mean, who will be running this show with us this morning is no other uh, person than somebody who is very well grounded and rooted when it comes to talking about GMOs, and that is Badibo Rhodes Vibor. Yeah. Badibo, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Welcome and to And good to have you on Crossfire. Yeah, good to be here. Good to be here. All right. Uh, Badibo, before we talk about GMO, I know that, you know, people are waiting to really know exactly, you know, what... Um, what GMOs are and yeah. why we'll be talking about it this morning. But first of all, let's talk about, do you, were you able to get fuel? Did you drive here? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, okay. How did you get fuel into your car? Well, some filling stations are selling fuel, okay. some not so much. All the right, but so you were able to get it at the normal price? Um, no, 100 naira. Mm. Yeah. It's been selling for 100 hours since <laughs> in the you last know, issue. I mean, I mean, come to talk about the queues back on our roads and at the filling stations. Um, I mean, we cannot just but start wondering what is happening again to Pengatsan, to the oil marketers, to oil subsidy and all of that. What's your perception about the Buari administration anyway? I believe that we need to give it some time. Okay. I believe that there's a lot of things that need to be done in the government and reorientate Nigerians as well as reorientate the system and the government. So it's not okay. going to happen overnight. Okay. And I believe that most importantly, we need to focus on producing and manufacturing our own goods, our own Very things. True. There is no reason why one of the biggest crude oil um, producers is still importing petroleum products. I just saw <laughs> on the cover of um, Guardian where it's saying that um, and then um, the 15 cargoes remain unsold of crude oil. And we have to also look at the global dynamics that's going on now. America is becoming a net producer of crude oil. Mm -hmm. Iran's oil will soon come on track. Shale oil is also very huge. So the demand for oil is really, really going to reduce. Wow. And we cannot continue being focused on that as a primary source of income, right. especially since we have a huge population that has abundant potential. All right, uh, uh, I mean, um, Badibo, right? Yeah. Now, Badibo, let's, let, let's go into GMO. Okay. Uh, because I really want us to take some time out. Yeah. Do you eat apple? Do you like tomatoes? <laughs> what about your onions? What about yam? I, I'm very sure you have a list of them, I mean, just ongoing. What about your cucumbers? What about watermelon? What about all these foods that you enjoy so much? You are going through a weight loss program, and you, you just have been you know, told that these are the fruits that you should eat. But you really don't even know so much about these fruits and how you, know, you can buy them. Now, we'll be talking about in-depth you know, on GMOs, and that is genetically modified organisms. Now, um, Badibo, let's talk yeah. about GMO. What, what is GMO? Um, GMO, in, the, in what we're talking about, is when 
a chemical company um, takes the genes of a natural um, occurring plant, for instance, an orange or um, cow pea, and, and then, that, that, that's my favorite fruit. <laughs> and then they <laughs> insert a gene into the genes of that fruit and then give it to you as seeds and say, okay, plant it and then use it in your country. There are many advantages and disadvantages. Well, not many advantages. There are many well, disadvantages. production. That's what that's, they claim, but it good. has been shown. Reports have come out to show that it does not increase production at all. Mm. There is no increase in production. It destroys the soil. Very true. And also, we need to understand why the gene is modified in the first place. The companies that do these things are chemical companies. What they're trying to do is sell more of their chemicals, more of their pesticides. Mm -hmm. What they discovered is when they use their pesticides on the land, it kills all the weeds, it kills all the microorganisms in the soil, it kills the soil. But, and it starts to affect the plants. So what they did is now modify the plants so that it can resist their chemicals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so they, in the first place, what, they, what it was meant for was to protect the soil, was to probably protect the soil and pro pro protect the seeds so mm. that pest, it, they will not be pest in, infested. So there, there are two things we're talking about now. Okay. And it's interesting that we talk about it because it comes from the same companies. Okay. Um, this is a chemical company that sells chemicals. Now, they want their chemicals to be used by farmers. As pesticides. As pesticides yeah. and herbicides. Yeah. But the problem is their chemicals are so concentrated that it kills off even the plants you are trying to protect. Mm. Okay. So what they now do is that they say, okay, you know what? So that, and also, the weeds start to become resistant to their pesticide. Because nature, if you just want to just be using chemicals on things, nature will find a way to adapt. Just like mosquitoes will find a way to adapt. Right. You know, they will adapt. So now, they said, okay, we now need to increase the amount of chemicals. So farmers will buy more chemicals. But now, to allow for this plant to survive all that spraying, we are going to alter this the, the, plant. The natural gene. To suit. To suit the chemical. Mm. So they took a bacteria that resists that chemical that they found in the soil, and it's called the Bt gene. So they now place it in corn. They place it in, in Nigeria. They are placing it in cowpea, so that when you spray these chemicals, those plants don't die. But they don't take into consideration the effect that that has on the human body. You know, it, it, for them, it ends in, we have sold chemicals, farmer has okay. sprayed chemicals, he can sell his products. Mm. But the end result is, what does it do for the human body? Because the human is eating food for nourishment. Okay. That's the ultimate standard that it must be weighed with. Now, if this thing causes diseases, and the process also causes diseases, the World Health Organization in March came out to finally say that glyphosate, which is the key ingredient in this pesticide, is carcinogenic. Wow. Scientists have been saying this for 10 years, but it took that amount of time for World Health Organization to come out and say this. So many people have done experiments on it, but it goes back into how corrupted the world has become. And that's something that I feel that we need to touch on, because now, for instance, if a chemical company yeah is the one that puts together the body that regulates it, or has its people in those companies that Definitely regulate it. Definitely, it can be curbed. It cannot be curbed. If a chemical company runs, invests, and finances um, universities that are going to do research to investigate the effects on it, they will tell the university, this is, the, this is what we are interested in. This is the research. If you, as a young PhD student, wants to research the effects of um, eating GMO on the human body, nobody's going to give you any funding. Government is not funding it. And also, mm. this mm. most of this technology comes from America. But I need to understand something. So yeah. you know, sorry to cut you short. No problem. I understand also that you know, the various World Health Organizations and agencies, yeah. they're actually standing, well, in a way, they speak against GMO foods, yeah. and they try to you know, support organic you know, yeah. fruits and, and food materials. Yeah. But if they're not coming out to take a concrete stand against 
you know, the, the use or the production of GMO foods. Yeah. Isn't it another way of supporting the ideology of GMO of and also promoting you know, it's other ways of cutting human life. Because I yeah. know there are so many factors which some of these organizations use in reducing you know, human population. Yeah. Wars is one of them. Yeah. So isn't it possible this is another tool? Um, honestly, like, there's so many things to touch on. Um, a company in California called Epicyte mm -hmm. once made an announcement that they've produced corn that can reduce the sperm, if the um, fertility in men, if they eat the corn. This is, you can do your own research. This is not hidden information. That's one side to it. The second side to it is the amount of the linkage to cancer, the linkage to um, infertility, the linkage to endocrine receptors. That, mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a scientist called Tyron Hayes. He went to Harvard and then also became a professor in a leading university in California. And he did, they came to him and said, Sagenta, came to him and said, Sagenta? Yes, let us do an experiment for us on the effect of these chemicals. They came to him, he didn't go to them. Mm -hmm. And he came out and said, these chemicals are causing um, a process where male frogs become female frogs. <laughs> This is a fact. No, no, Mill no, no, no. I need to I'm understand. Because they're becoming female, female frogs. frogs. Yeah, tadpoles. I mean, they're, they're reproductive tadpoles. organs. Yes, they become like hermaphrodites. Some of them had male and female organs. Male frogs became female frogs, things like that. Because you have to think about it. Uh. And this, this is right. it's important that, all, that people pay attention. Everything in this world starts from the cell. Every human being starts from the cell. The cell. Mm -hmm. the cell literally has all the information to make you who you are. Very Tall, true. short, small, fat, whatever is in there. In plants, everything starts in the seed. Mm -hmm. Now, and our political side to this is that these companies come in and they say they have patent rights over those seeds. What does that mean? It means that every year our farmers have to go back to these companies it. to buy it from them. You can't so actually you use can't this, save it. You, you can't, can't reuse use it. the fruits, the seeds in those the fruits thing. to plant. You can't, and even because even wow. if you plant it, the yield will be so low. So they will say, "Okay, come back and buy from us." And these companies, of course, their seeds are based, their prices are based on what they expect. So they will say, "Okay, we want to sell this thing for hundred dollars." You have no choice. But now we are here. And our dollar is now at 200 and something. <laughs> okay, now let, let's even bring it on, Barry Bob. Yeah. Now, I know that, um, I mean, my little study on GMO yeah. has, um, has pointed to the fact that it causes, you know, organ damage, yeah. uh, gastrointestinal and immune system, you know, uh, disorders, accelerated aging, infertility, yeah. Yeah. and so many things yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Now, we have a Ministry of Agriculture yeah. in Nigeria yeah. that is supposed to be responsible for regulation. I mean, maybe seed are even made available by this ministry to yeah. ensure that farmer, farmers can actually access, you know, um, healthy seeds mm. so that they can plant, you know, for, you know, for their business. I mean, yeah. a lot of people are in a Greek now for business. Exactly. Not even just, you know, um, just doing on, on a small scale to, to provide food for their families, but yeah. they want to sell whatever is the proceed of their farm, you know, out and exchange it for money. Yeah. Now, do you, do you think that the Ministry of Agriculture in Nigeria is aware of GMO? Are they, are they, do you think there is any insight as, as, uh, as their involvement maybe? Yes, they, they, they are extremely aware. I mean, if not for the former Minister of Agriculture, who is currently the ADB Bank chairman, yeah. um, GMO is not in Nigeria. The way you know, because I know no, no, that, no, no, that you no, have no, no. A, a classical he, he case. Said, he said, sorry, as a last year, 2000 and July, you know, but he granted an interview and he said specifically that there were no GMO foods in the country. And then he responded to an article I wrote. He responded to an article that Valuable wrote and I read. But there are so many language. GMO foods in the country. All right, let's take this call. Uh, <laughs> Ken, good morning. <laughs> Hello, Ken. <laughs> Hello. All right. Now let, let's continue, Valuable. I think that call just they, didn't go through. Now, now you, you, okay. You were saying something about the yeah. government or the said, Ministry of Agriculture. I said he, he's been, he's, he's very aware. And even when he said that, I came out to refute those claims because BT Calpi had mm -hmm. already been trial stages in Zaria, right? And it, is, it was in conjunction with Monsanto. And literally, Zaria was used as a surrogate breeding ground. I mean, they, they come and talk as if. 
oh, uh, uh, research institutes are, you know, doing all this research and doing all this technology and making it. But is they take these things, make it somewhere else, then bring it here and say, okay, you guys plant it and test if it's good. That's what our research institutes have been reduced to. Now, the problem is Nigeria or a mixture of things. One, we, we, want to, we want to fly before we crawl. Right? We're trying to copy and paste an American system here that's based solely on profits, not on the health of so consumers. So it's not on the foods anymore, it's on the goods. It's, it's the on amount of production. Exactly. And what exactly, the financial gains exactly. also. It, it, now, <clears throat> let's be building on, on the story. Yeah. Um, is there any advantage? You said little, very small advantage, but so More many disadvantages. disadvantages. Yeah. disadvantages. What, what exactly is the only um, advantage of, of, of um, GMOs? To be honest with you, I won't even say there's any advantage, okay. as far as I'm concerned. Why? Because if you actually look at the system that has been set up, you realize that it's just a company that's opportunistic, that's trying to control the food system hmm. via monopoly. They've, they saw a possible. It's like creating a. They know need. how very rich our soils yes. are. Yes. They know how very. If, if, if your technology is that fantastic, go mm -hmm. and plant it in the desert. Let us know your science is really that good. Our earth, our land is so good. We are so blessed. And we don't deserve it. We just have it. Mm -hmm. You throw yam or corn in Lagos on you the ground. You don't throw it anywhere. It's grow. It's grow. It's okay. The problem in our agriculture is that our government has no finance, has no help. We don't have logistic frameworks. There are farmers in the north that 70% of their products spoil on farm because there's there no, no storage. There's no storage. No even, even bringing it down there's no south. Storage. That is our problem. America that we are looking at have one of the highest subsidies okay, please, for farmers. Can you, can you please hold on? We have a call. Good morning, Mr. James. Good morning. Welcome Shoma. to Press Fire. Morning, James. Good morning, Mr. Dabwa, and good morning to our wonderful guest. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for calling. It, it, it really gladdens my heart to hear when sensitive issues like this are being discussed. And thank one you. of the things I want to point out is that most of these companies who are involved in this GMO stuff, the CEOs, the top people, they don't even use their own goods. They don't even use their own yeah. products. They have organic plants in their backyard where they grow and manufacture everything. Very true. And then the first thing I want to put up like a question to us is, what exactly is our government doing? What exactly is the government doing? Because I have a friend who is in agriculture. He has a PhD in uh, food science production. And I was discussing with him, and he said that most of the claims we have on the, the, the stuff we take, the juices we drink, and most of the other stuff, okay. even in the fast food, that there's no way they tell you these things are, are no preservatives and they stay for months, that it is not possible. Something has been done to it. And what is the government doing? The least, at least the least I think they can do is to put up this warning. We have products that are genetically modified. Mm -hmm. Let us know what we are taking. Educate the people. Let us know. All what right. exactly is the government doing? What are the legal legal steps we are taking about this GMO issue? Mm -hmm. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you very much, Thank James. You so much, I mean, Mr. wonderful James. contribution. Thank you. But before before we go on, uh, Gladibor, let me quickly read something here. The American Academy of Environment Medicine um, urges doctors to prescribe non-GMO diets for all patients. Now, they cite animal studies showing organ damage, gastrointestinal and immune system disorders, accelerated aging and infertility. Human studies show how genetically modified foods can leave materials behind inside us, possibly causing long-term problems. Now, he said genes inserted in GM soils, for example, can transfer into to the DNA of bacteria living inside us and that the toxic insecticide produced by GM corn was found in the in the blood of pregnant women and their unborn fetus. Yeah. I mean, this is horrible. It is. This is a very bad thing. And I, unfortunately, I don't want to believe it's a popular, um, I mean, area that Nigerians are actually... Do you think there's awareness of this in Nigeria? Is there any, any awareness? Is there any NGO, an organization, or an individual, a body responsible, you know, to ensure that everything about GMO is, is regulated? or probably eradicated from our, okay. From our yeah. mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Um, okay, well, first, let's talk, let's start from the consumer, us. Yeah. Um, we don't really know. 
We don't really we know. We don't really know. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let me. Yeah, no, hold on. Let, we don't really know. You answered one part of my question. <laughs> no, no. I the think awareness. It builds, it builds up. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. You will continue on the build up. Let's go on a short break now. When we come back, okay. we'll still be talking about GMOs. All we'll right. be right back. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.